I had some more questions about this type of problem. Um, there was one on the homework and one on D2L. So I wanted to go ahead and, and work this one out. Um, that's similar to those, uh, but uses slightly different numbers. Um, so which of the functions g of x, and I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 listed here, which of these um, are such that 5 to the x is big O of g of x? Now before I start, I want to um, point out two, well, one definition and, and two important facts, okay? First of all, let's let's recall what it means for uh, something to be big O. Okay, so this is the definition. A function f of x, uh, I tell you what, to be consistent with the way this is phrased, um, yeah, no, yeah, that'll work. A function f of x is big O of another function g of x provided there are constants in and a so that if x is greater than or equal to n we have that the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to a times the absolute value of g of x. Now I realize that this can seem kind of obtuse and slightly unhelpful, okay? But what I want you to understand is the essence of, of, of what this is saying, okay? The, the intuition behind this, the intuition is the following. Um, g of x grows faster or just as fast as f of x. So that's what it means to say, that's what it means when we say f of x is big O of g of x. It means that g of x grows faster or just as fast as f of x. So that's what we really mean by this, okay? And that's what, what I want you to keep in mind when you're working out these types of problems. Now, the, the two, th that's one definition. The two facts that will be useful in doing these types of problems are ones that are in the book and in the notes, and I talked about them in that extra video that I, that, that I, that I posted. So fact one, says the following. Um, so suppose f1 of x is big O of g1 of x and f2 of x is big O of g2 of x. Okay. Actually, that's kind of the, the setup for both of the facts. So we're going to assume this is the assumption. Suppose f1 of x is big O of g1 of x, and f2 of x is big O of g2 of x. In fact, 1 says that f1, uh, let me say it like this. Fact 1 is f1 of x plus f2 of x. So I add the two functions together. This is big O of the maximum of g1 of x and g2 of x. So that is when you're adding two functions together, you only have to pay attention to the, the biggest bounding function, to the biggest big O function when you're adding them together. And then fact two says that f1 of x multiplied by f2 of x. Well, this is big O of g1 of x multiplied by g2 of x. So when you're multiplying two functions together and you want to find the big O bound, you multiply their, their bounding functions together. That's how you'll, you'll do that. So with, with this intuition idea right here, and then these two facts, that's really all you need to do any of these problems. Um, as long as you know 
you know, which are the, the biggest functions. Remember the uh, factorial ones grow the fastest, and then we exponential functions, and then we have the polynomials, um, and then the logs and the square root functions and things like that. So let's see if we can answer some of these problems, okay? Um, let's see here. Why don't we do um, this one? Let's, let's just do the, the first one. Okay, let me put a line in right here. Okay, so uh, let me let me label these. This is A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so doing A, okay, well, 77x to the 32nd, that is a polynomial function. Okay, that, that's a polynomial. And we're trying to find functions so that 5 to the x is big O of g to the x. Well, this one doesn't work because 5 to the x is not big O of any polynomial function because exponentials always grow faster than, than, than polynomials do. So that one's out. For part b, well we have 3 to the x times x factorial. Well, factorials grow fastest of all. Those are our fastest growing functions. And because of fact 2 up here, which says that when you multiply two functions together, the big O bound is the product of, of what bounds them. Well, this is a factorial function which is bigger than all exponentials. So that means 5 to the x is big O of 3 to the x times x factorial because x factorial grows faster than the exponential. So that one works. Let's look at part C. Well, notice that 20 to the x plus 2 over 4 to the x. Um, I mentioned before that when you're doing big O, you, you, you can ignore uh, things, the, the lower terms that are added on because the big O of two things that are added together is always the, the biggest one. So we can ignore that plus 2 constant. And once we do that, notice that 20 to the x over 4 to the x, uh, this is a um, just a college algebra thing. This simplifies to 5 to the x. Okay, that simplifies to 5 to the x. And that tells us, because I can ignore that constant added on, and then I have this division here. Well, that means 5 to the x is big O of 20 to the x plus 2 divided by 4 to the x. Because this is going to grow um, as fast or faster than just 5 to the x. Okay, um, so let's look at part D. Let's put it right here. So here's part D. Well, this is, um, you know, this consists of three things added together. Part D does. And when you're adding things together, you only look at the largest one. That means I can ignore 2 to the x, I can ignore 3 to the x. The only one that matters is the largest term because they're added together. And 5 to the x, because it's a bigger base, that grows faster than 4 to the x. That tells us that 5 to the x is not big O of 2 to the x plus 3 to the x plus 4 to the x. Again, since they're all added together, we only look at the largest one, and 5x is bigger than 4 to the, 4 to the x. So that one is out. So going back up to my list, um, this one checks out. This one doesn't work. Now let's look at x to the fifth times 5 to the x. This would be part E. So we have x to the fifth multiplied by 5 to the x. Well, these are this is two functions multiplied together, so the big O bound would be the product of whatever bounds them. Well, but look, one of the terms here is 5 to the x. And 5 to the x does grow as fast or faster than 5 to the x. And then I'm multiplying it by something to make it even a little bit bigger. 
So that means 5 to the x is big O of x to the fifth times 5 to the x. So that one checks out. And the last one, let me go ahead and copy this one. This last one here, f Well, we're going to do something similar to what we did with C, and we're going to use some algebra to multiply this out. Notice that this is equal to, if I, if I, if I distribute the 5 halves to the x, this is going to be 5 over 2 to the x multiplied by 2 to the x plus 7 times 5 over 2 to the x. But that's equal to 5 to the x plus 7 times... 5 halves to the x. Well, I'm adding two things together, so I only keep the largest one, which is 5 to the x. And 5 to the x does grow as fast as 5 to the x, so that means that 5 to the x is big O of that original one we have. 5 halves to the x times 2 to the x plus 7. So this one also checks out. Okay, so B, C, E, and F are all um, such that 5 to the X is big O of them, and A and D are not. So hopefully this clears things up, and, you know, when this shows up on the, on the final, um, you know, you won't have as much trouble doing these types of problems.